Hello, so I'm Dr. Mark Champion and you, we are here today in the rain, in the wind, on a bog to explain how sphagnums make bogs acidic. You can probably remember the experiment with the pickled onions and the pH paper to see how acidic bogs were. Well, this is how they work. Unfortunately, though, it means we've got to start with some basic chemistry. So here we have a wet pen on a whiteboard that doesn't write. So there's the water. And when it rains, the compounds that are collected in the rain come down and they dissolve in the water. And this gives you negatively charged ions. So things like chlorine and ammonia, and these are negatively charged. And then we have the, what are going to be the positively charged ions. So things like nitrogen and potassium and these are all important plant nutrients so the sphagnum has somehow got to get these out of the water so it's important that we know that the compounds split when they dissolve into ions so here we have a stylized sphagnum plant cell. Now, sphagnum plant is gonna have thousands of these cells, but the important bit about them is that this piece here, around the outside here, is a special substance called polyuronic acid, and it's very, very rich. A plant, a sphagnum plant is approximately 30% of this special sugar acid, polyurinic acid. And it's this acid shell around the cell that allows for the very clever iron exchange, which makes the bog acidic happen. So in the cell, because this is a plant, like any other plant, there's photosynthesis going on using the energy of the sun and the sunlight to turn carbon and water and so on uh, into sugars. And at the same time, there's respiration, which is the plant being able to use all this uh, sugar and so on, and turn that into energy for the plant and growth and so on. So that's the really important thing. And that's the same processes that go on in lettuces and tulips and, da uh, and daffodils. It's just the same. But the really clever thing that the sphagnum can do because of this special sugar acid cell is it can take the, the hydrogen from the photosynthesis and the respiration and free them up. So here we have the H is the hydrogen coming out as hydrogen ions. And th these are then replaced so that the plant can gain, because remember it lives in a bog, so it's very little nutrient. So it uses this system to take the nutrients into the plant. We will use a different color. We'll use red, because it, there we are. Use the, there's the N ions going in because the plant needs the N to grow. So it uses, here we are, that's an N. It uses this system of the hydrogen coming out to pull the nitrogen and the potassium and so on into the plant so that it's got loads of nutrients so it can grow. And it's this clever uh, chemical structure around the outside that makes sphagnums unique in their ability to pull these nutrients in. And at the same time, they're changing their environment by pushing out these hydrogen ions into the water. And it's hydrogen that actually makes 
acids. So these are now combining, and you'll remember from before, these are now combining with the CLs and the uh, nitrogen and so on, uh, nitrates in the water to make us acids. So we're getting hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid and so on forming in the water. So we've got the hydrogen combining there with the sulfur sulfides and we've got SO4s and N uh, hydrogen. There we are, all making these lovely acids. And then the question is what happens with all these inorganic acids? Well, these inorganic acids, they work on the peat, all this lovely black peat that's around, and that makes organic acids such as tannic acid and fulvic acid. And these are why the bog is this amazing, bog water is this amazing brown color. Um, and that's why a cup of tea or your whiskey is brown because they are full of the same sort of acids as the bog.